Hi, I'm Ed Chung. Welcome back. The flu, or influenza, is proving once again that it takes no holidays. Here in North America, during the holidays, the flu season began to peak two to three weeks earlier than expected and at extremely high levels. This is going to turn into an epidemic, with approximately 20% of the population possibly even getting this. The flu activity nationwide is now more than 50% above recent year averages. California has reported a 35% positive rate with all patients coming into urgent cares, clinics, and emergency rooms. There are over 10 deaths so far in the population age less than 65, which is relatively rare. In the Southern Hemisphere, there have been multiple, multiple deaths this past season. The best source of this information is the CDC or Centers for Disease Control website, or cdc.gov. And most of this information I'm going to present is from them. This influenza A type is named H3N2 serotype. It remains the predominant strain in this surge in approximately 70 to 80% of all cases of the flu. Because of a virus mutation under the season's vaccine, when it was created, the flu vaccine is estimated to only be the 30% effective. Unfortunately, these type A viruses in circulation are not matching the majority of flu vaccines in the US. The protein coat of the virus has mutated and the flu vaccine that was created when it was created may have mutated some also so that they're not matching. The second line treatment or defense for patients at high risk for flu complications is Oslomir or Tamiflu. As I said prior, knowledge is power, and I'd like you to have a little bit of understanding of the influenza flu virus and vaccines. There are four types of influenza viruses. Influenza A and B are the primary human ones that cause seasonal epidemics in Northern Hemisphere in the winter and the Southern Hemisphere during their winters. The emergence of a new and very different influenza A virus to infect people has caused an influenza epidemic and even worldwide, a pandemic. Influenza C and D viruses are generally more animal viruses and cause very minor to no disease in humans. The influenza A viruses are divided into subtypes based on the two proteins on their surfaces. The two proteins are named H hemagglutinin, which there are 18 different subtypes, and N which, <coughs> for neuronaminase, which there are 11 different subtypes. So for example, the influenza A virus have different strains. Our current strain is called the H3N2 strain. In the spring of 2009, a new H1N1 virus changed and emerged and mutated to cause severe illnesses in humans. This 2009 H1N1 has now replaced the original H1N1 virus that previously was circulating in humans. So even though you have the same strain, you can have different mutations under the same name to cause disease. Influenza B viruses are divided into subtypes, can, but can be further broken down into lineages and strains usually by the location and date of their emergence. For example, the current circulating influenza B virus usually belongs to two lineages, either the B Yamagata or the B Victoria strain. Most influenza A typically hits earlier in the season, while influenza B usually comes later. That is Symptoms of the flu. The typical symptoms, you can, I'm sure you can look up, and you've all experienced this before. Sore throat, cough, headache, fever, muscle aches, fatigue, runny nose, sneezing, nausea, GI upset. What you have to understand is that each strain of the flu have all these symptoms. However, each strain also has their predominant cluster or main primary symptoms. This year's type A strain primarily has been shown 
or patients are coming in with fever, cough, some shortness of breath, and fatigue. While other strains in past years have caused more nausea, stomach upset, sneezing, and runny nose. People should recover from the normal flu virus within a week or so, although the cough and fatigue may last longer. If you're still really ill after seven days, it's a very good indication that maybe something else more serious is going on. You could get a bacterial infection on top of the flu. You are most infectious during the first two days and advised to try to avoid the spread by avoiding contact with others for two to three days if all possible. So here are my basic four flu recommendations to avoid illness and perhaps get treated for illness if you do. Number one, avoid if all possible public areas, closed spaces with lots of people, for example, airplanes, clinics, and hospitals. Number two, wash your hands regularly and sterilize or try to clean off public handles and spaces if, or try not to touch them if you can't avoid them. And perhaps wear a mask, especially if you're immunocompromised or have a chronic disease. This flu is deadly. Number three, still recommending the flu vaccine or flu shot to the unvaccinated. And the reason is, is because more influenza strains may hit later in the year. As I said earlier, the influenza A usually hits early and influenza B comes in later. The vaccine should be effective for the influenza B. And number four, if you do get the flu, go in early. Try to go in within the first one and perhaps at most two days once you get the flu because there are good flu medicines that will ameliorate and decrease the symptoms. So one of the big questions you may be asking is, well, why, did I, why should I get vaccinated if the flu shot doesn't really work this year? It's only 10, maybe 20, at most 30% effective. Well, a few reasons. First, the flu virus is constantly changing and the vaccine protects against multiple strains of the virus, A and B. The latter strains of B may be coming in later and with vaccination, you'll be protected against that. Number two, the flu vaccine still offers protections for other strains this season, and it's the best way to protect yourself. Many people are getting the flu and becoming very sick and even hospitalized. This virus is life-threatening and you can save a life by getting vaccinated and not getting the flu, or at least if you do get the flu, perhaps the symptoms may be milder because of the vaccine. What viruses in the 2017-18 flu vaccine will this protect? Well, there are multiple different viruses, again, A and B, and this primarily strain is H3N2 from Australia, which is approximately 10% effective. In last year's flu seasons, 16 and 17, the vi vaccines were found to be about 35, 34, 35% effective. So why was the low effectiveness? It was because, again, of a mutation. Well, things can mutate again. Between 2005 and 2015, the va flu vaccines estimated to avert or prevented approximately 40,000 deaths in the United States. So I highly recommend that you go ahead and still get the flu shot. So what should we do if you do get the flu? Well, take care of yourself, drink lots of fluids and water, and try not to give it to anyone else. However, there are medicines out there that will help decrease some of the symptoms and decrease the length that you ha you're suffering. These medicines are called neuroamidase inhibitors. The primary medicine, the generic name is called Ostovimir, and the trade brand name is called Tamiflu. There's also Zamovir, which is an inhaled brand name called Relenzo, and Permavir, which is an IV form with the brand name called Rapivab. They all have activity against both influenza A and B. Again, go to the CDC website. It's probably the best place to get your information. To summarize, however, the CDC, these medicines, the neuroaminase inhibitors, especially Tamiflu or Osamir, which is a oral tablet, first shortens the duration of fevers and illness symptoms. Second, 
They reduce the risk of complications from the flu or influenza, such as otitis media in the young, or pneumonia in the old, or even respiratory failure in patients with multiple chronic diseases. Early treatment of hospitalized adult influenza patients have been reported to reduce death by starting this medicine. And in hospitalized children, it's been shown to reduce the time of illness in hospitalization. But the greatest benefit is when these medicines are given early. The earlier, the better. The minute you develop the symptoms, they're recommending that you go in and try to see your provider and perhaps start the medicine within the first 48 hours of onset. After the 48 hours, it's unclear on regular healthy patients whether it'll be beneficial. However, those with chronic disease, even then, it's been shown possibly to reduce morbidity, mortality, and hospitalizations. In a very large combined study analysis, it shows that Tamiflu, or Oslomir, reduces the typical length of illness by approximately one day. So the average length of duration um, decreases by 21% compared with placebo or no medicine from 123 hours to 98 hours. So you got approximately a day of benefit from this medicine. But again, you gotta go in early. The second thing is that this medicine is shown to reduce lower respiratory tract infections requiring antibiotics more than 48 hours after the study by about 40 to 45% versus placebo. So it decreased lower risk, lower infections, especially those in chronic diseases from approximately 8.7% down to 4.9 or 5%, which is a significant decrease. The third thing this medicine has been shown is that it has reduced hospital admissions for any cause by about 60%, down from 1.7% hospitalization to 0.6%. So those with a chronic disease, again, go in early and see your provider. You have to understand, however, that there are some side effects of these medicines, which are primarily nausea, some stomach upset, perhaps problems sleeping, and some neurological changes in some subsect of patients. So in summary, number one, avoid if all possible open areas to catch the flu. Number two, wash your hands regularly and sterilize all public handles and computers. Try not to touch them if you can and perhaps wear a mask. And number three, I still recommend the flu shot because again, influenza can come back again later in a different strain. And last, if you do get the flu, go early for your flu medications. Thank you, I'm Ed Schoen.